What's up, party people? Welcome to Saturdays and Seltzers, the 61st most popular sports podcast in Mexico. No, I will never let you guys forget that. My name is Kendra, my name is Kendra Middleton. I don't know what that was, but it was not my name. And I am joined by my co-host, Sarah Griffin. Sarah, how are we doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> okay. It's been okay. One of those weeks, you know. It's okay to be okay or not okay. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, anything else. That's okay. Um, I want to know what you are drinking tonight. But first off, I do want to say thank you to everyone who bought some of our merchandise, put something in their cart, or even opened the link. That was awesome. Um, I'm so stoked that people are going to be wearing our stuff around. I'm hoping, you know, like one of those like dreams that you have about people like seeing someone in public, like wearing something of yours. That is how I feel mm -hmm. about this, just because I'm like, all right, it was in Boston, <laughs> like maybe we'll see someone. I don't know. But that's if you are one of my loved ones, that's what you're getting for Christmas. Sorry about it. Um, I placed an order for like 20 of them the other day. So yeah, <laughs> just wanted to say thanks. So Sarah, what are we drinking tonight? Okay, so tonight my mom went and bought me new seltzers because she's been listening and has been hearing me drink the same things over and over again. So mm -hmm. she bought me I've never heard of this brand. It's Plum and Petal. It's only 100 calories. It's vodka with sparkling water. It's a peach spritz. It says a refreshing infusion with white peach, lavender, and black tea with honey. It's so good. Wow. I do love peach hand. stuff, but like, look how fancy it is. Damn. I don't want to okay. like gross nails. But <laughs> we should follow them on the gram if their stuff is good. Because then we can figure out where, like, people buy it and I can buy it. Ooh, yeah. No, it's really good. Um, I'm off brand again tonight because this is all I had in my fridge. And I'm about to go to the gym. So I'm pre-gaming the gym with a beer. Trade oh, okay, yeah. I, was, I was telling Sarah, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. It's, it's Thursday night, baby. <laughs> um football <laughs> fuck yeah um uh, wait do you know that guy on tiktok that's like yeah fuck yeah do you know what I'm yes about? i love that <laughs> that's guy <laughs> that's how i feel right now um but the trader joe's loggers high key slap like i'm not like a i mean i'm a yeah like i'm a beer drinker but i'm not a beer drinker and i think that i've had one of these with a bowl of chili like once a week for like a month <laughs> <laughs> dirty football so they are a dub from me and they're like six dollars a pack so like go buy them Ooh. um I am going to move into our HLH if you are new here we do an HLH segment every week which is called high low hero so basically it's your high of your high of your week I can't talk today what's going on with me I'm not even drunk yet your low of the week and then your <laughs> hero of the week which is something unexpected that was good that happened to you so Sarah what's your HLH this week Okay, so I have two highs this week. One is the NLL being back. That was all last weekend. Very fun, very exciting. It was good stuff. I was very busy with it, but it was good busy. Um, also, Olivia Rodrigo announced she's going on tour. I'm not, it's kind of a high, kind of a low because she's weirdly in Boston. She's going to a venue. It's called The Roadrunner. It's not open yet, I guess. Okay. And it only fits 3,500 people. So getting tickets going to be a bloodbath. They are all $50, the sales tomorrow morning. But if I don't get a ticket, I know resale value is going to be like fucking like $3,000 for that reason. So we'll see how happy I am come next week. <laughs> what time do they go on sale? 10 a.m. I'll get up and get in line for you. And if I get one, I'll sell to you. <gasps> that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, no joke. I'm going to set my, this is friendship. I'm setting my alarm right now. <laughs> that is friendship. You just have to tell me how to do it. Like, send me the link and I will get in line for you. Yes. After you're finished recording, I will send you the whole thing because it's this huge, like, pre-sale thing. I'm just stressed about it. Lauren's stressed about it. My friend Leanna's stressed about it. We're just like, fuck it. Hell yeah. Friendship. <laughs> friendship. That is such friendship. I so don't yeah, give a damn. could be a damn. potential low. <laughs> I don't damn about her music, but I'm here for you. <laughs> if I don't get tickets, that is definitely going to be my low next week because I'm going to be so upset when I lose out to a bunch of like 50 year old resellers and like 12 year old girls <laughs> all hands on deck all right all right yeah what's next okay my low is that kind of going along with me being super busy I'm burnt the fuck out and I know Kendra knows this I can't really talk about what I'm taking on another responsibility and it's a good it's exciting I don't know when I'm going to sleep really 
and I haven't had a social life in a couple months, but fuck it, we ball. So fuck it, we ball. My hero is, yeah, Christmas coming up because that's like two days off. Mm-hmm. I don't even really care about, like, I love Christmas. I'm just not really in the spirit this year. I haven't really had the time, but I'm like, well, that's time off. So Christmas, yeah. that's my hero. Well, I'm counting totally. down. I have a countdown on my phone. Yep. I had this conversation last night. I was like at my company Christmas party and everyone was like, oh, you know, like, what are your plans for Christmas? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm staying alone by myself at home. And everyone's like, oh my God, like, why? Why don't you come over to my house and stuff? And I'm like, because there are so few days when you work in social media and like content creation that are quiet out of the year, Mm -hmm. Easter, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And that's pretty much it. And if I can like be by myself and just, cause like you, I'm fucking burnt out at this point in the season, like between all the sports and stuff and everything. It's like, I love my job. Don't get me wrong, but like, I, like yeah. you get burnout, out and it's like I literally like I appreciate you guys inviting me but I just want to put my phone down turn it off for the day watch basketball and football and like I don't know get fucked up alone like I, that's all I want to do <laughs> and order Chinese food because that's what I do every year I'm like yeah. in college I would purposely like yeah I had to like cover hockey and stuff like that like so I had to stay back at school but like I'd be so excited to like order Chinese food on Christmas and just like bull by myself because the world is hardly mm-hmm. ever quiet when you work in social media and there's no expectation of like you posting or anything like that and it's so nice I know that is so nice the like new thing I'm taking on they're like oh yeah like you'll probably have to work holidays I was like to be honest if that's an excuse to just sit in my house <laughs> that's fine I'm fine I'll do it yeah. I don't care yeah my HLH this week was my company Christmas party last night. If you follow me on Instagram, I put up a picture of me at 10 p.m. carrying my co-host around the bar. <laughs> um, but it was like basically an open bar. It was like all you can drink for like a dollar. Um, and we all had lots of bevs. So that was a lot of fun. My other high <laughs> is the new Warzone map that came out today. I already copped a dub. So that's a high. My low is the Whole Foods ad because it's low-key sucked lately and I'm upset about it because I am a Whole Foods whore um, and I really need to go grocery shopping, but I'm like, I don't want to buy a whole turkey or like tulips. So like help a sister out. <laughs> um, and then my hero is the weird animal meme rabbit hole that I have found myself in and now drug Sarah into. Um, if you want to follow <laughs> Possum Lovers 24 on Instagram, I don't know what you're doing with your time because it's the best account ever. And a couple weeks ago, we talked about these like capybara memes that I had been suggested. I'm now so deep on capybara Instagram. It's a problem. Hell yeah. Hell so, yeah. The weird, I apologize to Sarah for the weird animal memes I've been sending here on the internet, but it's just, that's where we're at. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just where we're at, you know? Uh, any serotonin I will take. I do not have any seltzer updates this week. Sarah, you have a new seltzer. Are you throwing it in your top three? That's to be determined. You know what I'm like realizing now looking at my seltzer rankings, it's very similar to the Loverboy Orange Chai. Mm. So I feel like I have to get through this one and then I'll be able to really tell because it's actually extremely similar to that one. That one's my number one. So that might shake things up a bit. Okay. All right. Fair. All right. Well, we'll, re- we'll circle back. Um, I know you yeah. said you don't have a ton to say about the MLB, but what do you have to say? Yeah, obviously there's not much you can say. They can barely say anything, but the rule five draft is still going on for the minor league portion. I know people, people start kind of paying attention to, I feel like it last year for Red Sox fans, at least because we got like Garrett Whitlock out of it. And obviously he turned into an amazing pitcher for them but that was part of more the major league portion I believe it basically is just any guy that's not on a team's 40-man roster isn't protected and another team can pick them up and grab them they just have to be for the minor league for the major league portion at least they have to be on the major league roster for the whole season minor league one's a different story but the Red Sox did get two pitchers to add they add Austin Lambright in the first round from the Royals and Brian Keller from the Yankees. I don't know much about either of these guys. I just thought it was kind of funny that we got another pitcher from the Yankees. Who knows? Maybe he's the next Garrett Whitlock. So I thought that was most exciting baseball news we'll probably get for the next few months anyways. Yeah, fair. <laughs> um, I saw you had in our notes that you had a quick explanation about the rule of five draft. Yeah. Yeah, so it basically is. It's just like like Jonathan Aruz two years ago, Garrett Whitlock, 
Whitlock last year. For the major, like people really only pay attention to the major league ones. There's five rounds of it, and basically what it is is like I said, any guy that's not on the 40 man roster in the off season, a team can claim for their own. But the rule is that you have to keep them on your 40 man roster for the entire season. So like, if he's not doing well, you can't just send him down to the minor leagues because otherwise that team that he came from gets them back. And I believe you have to like pay a fine, not a fine, but like you have to pay something to that team too. Okay. All right. Oh, also I'm going to add to my high really quick. Have you noticed that I changed our Twitter banner like a week ago? Yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> I like the new banner. I like, didn't say anything. So I wanted to see how long it would take you to figure it out. And I just like saw a notification on our Twitter and clicked over and I was like, uh, shout out to Bonk Master Cayman who made it, but it is our, <laughs> like, well, my favorite of the Bud Light winter seltzer packs. It's a bonk but with the cranberry Bud Light seltzer. <laughs> and I think it's so funny. Um, I just had to like shout that out really quick. Um, I know <laughs> that we have talked about the NLL and PLL quite a bit because the NLL season just started. I see you have some notes here um, and Matt Rambo is in them eventually. So yes. I would like to hear your NLL week one game recaps. Yes. So I know not everyone's super into the NLL. So I'm just going to give pretty quick notes just about like notable things of each game so the first game of the weekend was Friday night that was Vancouver Warriors at San Diego Seals Warriors won eight to seven big storyline there was Mitch Jones he's insane on offense he scored five goals and mind you they won eight to seven so like he won the game for them essentially on top of the fact they had Alex Bouquet, who's their goalie, and he had kind of a down year in 2020, and now he's with a new team. So there's a lot of question about, like, oh, like, why would they give him a starting position? Like, is he that good? And it looks like he's on a revenge tour, and he's off to a hot start. So good for him, because that San Diego offense is really good. Um, next game, this was my favorite game to watch, because this was the one I was covering on Lacrosse Flash Saturday night. It was Saskatchewan Rush at Halifax. Halifax Thunderbirds won overtime 12 to 11. It was very much like a playoff caliber game. I know the last time this team, it was actually the first NLL, NLL game I watched on YouTube. It was back in 2020, I want to say, right before this shutdown there. And it was another, it was an overtime game, like super close. Saskatchewan actually ended up winning. But yeah, so it was a playoff caliber game. I think it's a matchup we'll probably see come playoffs. Saskatchewan's defense is fucking disgusting. Mike Messenger, I put him in my um, like team of the week thing. He was so good on transition. I thought he was like one of those guys. Like it takes a lot, I feel like, to notice defense. Yes. How does overtime in lacrosse work? <laughs> oh, it's so it's just like sudden death. <laughs> literally, like huh. so if you're listening to this as a podcast, I literally just raised my hand like I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's sudden death so whoever scores the first goal <laughs> okay perfect continue yeah so Mike Mester I feel like it does take a lot for you to notice especially in a game like lacrosse but like wow this guy's really good on deep he is really fucking good on defense granted all of Saskatchewan's defense is really fucking good um Holden Garland shout out to Holden had two goals so I always love when defensemen score just same thing with hockey like when Charlie McAvoy scores that always makes my night Big man touchdowns in football. Exactly. We love that shit. We're here for it. (laughs) Then Adam Shoot, he's so Saskatchewan used to have one of the best goalies league, Evan Kirk. He went to Rochester. So now they have Adam Shoot, who was the backup to Kirk. And I just he's never really had the chance to have like a full time position there. So that was another big question mark. It really was the only question mark of the Saskatchewan team. And I thought he did a great job proving the doubters wrong because Halifax has probably one of if not the best offense in the league and he's all able to hold them to 12 goals that's pretty impressive Halifax defense was able to keep Mark Matthews quiet which he is insane I highly suggest everyone go for Saskatchewan he, Mark Matthews he's fucking nuts like complete powerhouse one of the best players in the league but then Halifax also has one of the best defenders in the league and Graham Hossick and he was able to shut him down I think Matthews had maybe one or two shots on goal. He had zero goals and he had six assists. So that's always nice, but they're able to keep him out of the middle of the zone, which is good. But it ended up being Halifax one overtime. There was like this weird kind of like in hockey. It was one of those moments where like, fuck this, because it was an overtime goal for Saskatchewan and it got called back because I guess his elbow was in the crease. 
so you can imagine they were not too thrilled. It was kind of one of those things where I think it depended on where you were watching from. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about it, but then Fennell ended up winning it for Halifax. And apparently he's a really good guy, so good for them. Go, go off, King. We <laughs> love that next, shit. Yeah, go off. We love that for you. Mm-hmm. Speaking of overtime goals, because there's three overtime games on Saturday. Matt Rambo, our favorite lacrosse player. I saw a tweet about goal. this. Yes, had the overtime goal for the Philadelphia Wings against Panther City Lacrosse Club. Shout out Matt Rambo. I believe he also, he might have had a hat trick. I'm not positive, actually. But I know someone, he had a multi-goal night. And yeah, someone tweeted I, and they were like, is Matt Rambo the best athlete in Philadelphia? <laughs> and why is the answer yes? And I was like, bro. Yes. I literally liked that tweet. I was like, I don't fucking care how weird it is. I'm in the depths of lacrosse Twitter, like looking at this. I'm like, like, yes, he is. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, he is. I retweeted it. No shame. <laughs> yeah, he is. That's our boy. Matt yep. Rambo, best athlete of Philly. Fuck yeah. Except fuck Bulls High School. Love you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Love that for our boy. Overtime winner. Philadelphia just looked awesome. They're another one that people are saying, like, this is the year. They're, I think they're ranked fourth to most likely to win the NL Cup, but pretty much everyone I see is like, that's the easiest, like, betting wise. Like, that's an easy fucking bet to take. Like, I would put my money on that. Plus, mm-hmm. they also have Trevor Baptiste, who, if you follow the PLL, he's also. Yep. Yeah, the Atlas. He's yeah, I know who that guy. is. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> Look at me. And so tre- I know you're learning. I love it. So Trevor Baptiste and box across the faceoff is not like half as important as it is in field. Like, you know, field like guys just if you're the faceoff guy, that's pretty much all you do. That is a flying box. You have to like actually I don't want to say actually play, but like you gotta do more than just the face off. <laughs> So, but Trevor Baptiste went 90% on the face-off, which is fucking nuts because the next best face-off percentage was Jake Withers in Halifax, and he went 70%, and that alone is also insane. So to go 90% is pretty nuts. Panther City is the newest team. They're an expansion team. I thought they did a lot better than I was expecting. Like, you know how expansion teams are. No one expects yeah. much out of them. Mm-hmm. And they're able to, able to take it overtime 12 to 11 against, like, good fucking team. So good for them. Mm-hmm. Agree. Next game was Albany Firewolves at Toronto Rock. I'm not going to lie. I did not watch a second of this game. It was the TSN game of the week. So I think it was the probably the most watched game. I didn't watch a fucking second of it. I, I know Toronto won 10 to 9. Good for them. I don't know anything about this game. Next was I'm Colorado about to take Man a video at- of Jackson what? while you do this just because he's cracking me up right now. But I'm listening. Okay, yes. So then the next one was Colorado Mammoth at Georgia Swarm. Colorado won it 16 to 11. The big highlight of that whole game was the Zed Williams goal. It was on, I think it might've been on ESPN. Like they actually shared that one because it was such a sick goal. Georgia's not ranked very highly. I do like Georgia because they have two cannons on their team you know pl cannons lyle thompson who's one of the best lacrosse players in the world everyone knows that and shane jackson who i think is one of the most underrated lacrosse players by american fans like i feel like canadian fans know how good he is just because they see him play box and then they go and saw him play field but like in the pll also he kind of got a late start i think just because of like maybe like a i think it's something with like his visa or something for united states but He's so, like, consistently good, especially, like, just go and watch his highlights. Like, this guy is so fucking good on offense. I don't know. I think just him and Lyle Thompson together is an insane duo, and I love that we have them together on Georgia and in the Cannons, and they deserve more appreciation as a duo. So, okay. shout out to Shane Jackson. Big fan. All right. Rochester Nighthawks at New York Riptide. Rochester won it in overtime 13-12. to 12. I know uh, the New York Riptide lost, but Jeff T. Go Riptide. So, <laughs> oh yeah, you are. You're a Riptide fan now. <laughs> they claimed me. They, they did. They actively seeked you out. So, <laughs> and I like Jeff T. So, yeah, I was like, Jeff T. is probably my favorite lacrosse player to watch, like at least one of them, just because he's only 24 years old. You know, he's rookie of the year for the PLL and he just looks like. He, like, I don't even know, just stunted on everyone. I'm like, damn, 
and this is your first you're playing pro cross did the same thing in his first nll game had a fucking hat trick like so off. I think he had like a six or seven point night, just like nuts. But then I watched his uh, post game interview, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, like I definitely still have to make some adjustments to like the TV timeouts. Like I'm still getting used to the game." He was like by far the best player on the Riptides roster that night. I was like, "What a flex! <laughs> what a flex!" <laughs> I was like, "Casual, casual night for Jeff T." Then the last game was Calgary Roughnecks at Buffalo Bandits. I know Mackie last week said if you want to follow a team to get into the NLL, you should follow the Buffalo Bandits. They won that game 16 to 9. <laughs> so she's definitely right about that. Their offense is just ridiculous. They Josh Bird and Dane Smith both had hat tricks. I don't want to butcher his name. Tahoka Nantakook. He's a rookie. He also had a hat trick. They're just such an exciting team to watch just because of that offense. If you like watching people score goals, you should watch them this week, which leads me into my next for three games people should watch. Mm -hmm. One is that Buffalo at Rochester games on Saturday at 7 p.m. Just, again, for that Buffalo offense, I think is sick. If you want to get to lacrosse, you'd be like, okay, this is an exciting game. Like, there's some games I feel like are more defensive, which is nice to watch, but if you're trying to get into it, you want, you want to watch people score goals. Mm -hmm. The other one is Friday is Toronto at Halifax. Those are the top two teams in the league, like arguably. And I think they're going to be battling for that top spot in the Eastern Conference all season long. So that's one to watch. And then also Saturday, 830, Calgary at Saskatchewan. I just need someone else to watch these Saskatchewan games just because they're going to be in their home arena for the first time uh, in like whatever it is, over 635 days. That place is fucking nuts. Like, People were, like, tweeting at me. They're like, Box Cross is so weird. Like, they're playing music the entire time. Like, it's loud. I was like, you need to watch these Saskatchewan home games because it's so loud. People, like, pound on their chest. There's, like, lights going off. It's insane. Are so we going to I Canada? I want to watch that. Fuck yeah, we're going to Canada. <laughs> I want to go so bad. <laughs> I'm, like, kind of in. It looks so sick. And then everyone's just like, because it's Canada. Everyone's fucking drunk as hell. <laughs> and I mean, Saskatchewan only has so many teams. So they, like, everyone, I guess, goes. Well, and, like, if it's that fucking cold, yeah, I'm going to be belligerently fucking hammered. Like, oh, yeah. hello? It's so, because I guess they have, like, arguably the best fan base in all the NLL, which I was like, yeah, no shit. What else are people in Saskatchewan going to go do? No offense to them. But... <laughs> I, like, didn't even think that it was, like, a real place until I was, like, 20. Yeah. So I was, like, there's no fucking... Headlining... There's grown no, ups? Like, grown ups. Or... Yes! yes and like, That's exactly it! Yes. That's what I'm doing! <laughs> Me too! <laughs> Sketch one. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's exactly... <laughs> yes, we are... You and me, same page. Speaking of same page, there's obviously very little PLL news right now, but the PLL is doing their top 50 players list, which is voted on by the player. So I guess it can't be too controversial, but I think it was pretty controversial. Sergio Perkovic was rated, I think, at 39. It was like, how the fuck is that possible? I'm mad at him <laughs> for toying with my heart and having a girlfriend this whole time and never posting about her <laughs> after like two years. Like, yeah, I'm fucking mad. But I, even I, in my, like, state of, like, fucking angry delusion can agree that that is fucked. Right? Because I was like, all right, he's, like, the two-point leader in all the PLL. And I get, like, yeah, whatever. That's kind of, like, a whatever stat. But I'm um, like, when you watch Redwood game, like, they have such a stacked roster to begin with, which, granted, like, every PLL team has a stacked roster. But Redwoods especially, and I feel like they have, like, so much team chemistry. But you still know him every single time he's on the field. He's always doing something. So, I'm like, how is he that low? It's because they – see, see the PLL homies got my back. They know that I'm heartbroken. They stand. <laughs> <laughs> they know. Well, I saw the Redwoods. They do. The Redwoods like were like retweet this if you think that Sergio is way too low. I'm like the players voted it. <laughs> it's true, but um, ride for the gang, die for the gang. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of these days is gonna bite me in the ass. Also, actually speaking of this, some actually that's my tweet of the week, yeah. so I'm gonna save it. But I do have a comment 
about this. Um, but yeah, okay. that's that's I'll save it. But I do want to get into this. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I think everyone can agree that that was bullshit. Who was the number one? They haven't even got into it yet. Mm, okay, so they do it like weekly, like they announce a few people. I think they're doing it daily, except they might start staggering it because like I'm going on a like Twitter spaces next week to like they asked me to like talk about the list up to then. And they mm-hmm. said, yeah, like the next day we're going to be releasing the top five. So we could kind of foreshadow that. And that's next week. And now there are I think they just released like 29 through 21 maybe today or something. Okay. So they must just be staggering it from now on. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll get into some NHL stuff. I saw that you yes. see, I was the last one to put like our notes in this week for this stuff, but I'm glad that you put the Zegers goal on here because I haven't stopped watching it. I think it's like, you know how, like when you have like suggested things on your computer to watch, I think that's my suggested like thing on YouTube right now. It is fucking everywhere as it should be, because that is, if it's not goal of the year, I'll be shocked. Like there, someone's really going to have to upstage it for something else to be game of the year, goal of the year. It's so fucking insane. Every time I watch it, every angle, like normally when like they like beat plays to death and you just see them constantly, I'm like, oh my God, like, let's move on. I, if like, I do not blame them for marketing this. Like the ducks, especially have been tweeting it like on the hour, I'm like, yep. I would do the same fucking thing. It is yeah. so nuts. They are able to pull that off. And I know it's the Sabres. So like, of course that would happen to the Sabres. At the same time, if I was a Sabres player and I saw someone attempting that, I'd probably just be like, what the fuck is going on? What What are we doing here? <laughs> I just like the first, so the first time I watched it, I like, I think I had to watch it like at least three or four times to like even mm-hmm. find the puck. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not kidding I like it was I used to cover him at BU and he was filthy because like I was doing some of BU stuff last year because they had like a bunch of games against Lowell and UMass yeah. obviously and like he was always like one of those players that I had to watch but like the fact that like I used to cover him and I've like interviewed him and stuff it was like kind of one of those moments where I was like oh <laughs> no it's so nuts because like you know I'm a big BU hockey fan and so like when I saw it like obviously Zeros has already had such a good season for the Ducks and like the Ducks this year like I feel like I've surprised a lot of people and I think it's good for them but at the same time like I remember seeing a video of I guess Zegers and Milano had been practicing this goal it was maybe like a month ago or so probably just like for fun like never would you think that you're able to do that in NHL mm-hmm. game and especially how young he is that he was able to do that like just on top of all that he's already accomplished in such a short time is insane yeah is this his first year? This is his second year out, correct? I believe so. Yeah. Um, I think this is like first full season. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, do you remember like a couple years ago when Sidney Crosby had that goal that was like, he like somehow like, yeah, that it kind of reminded me of yeah. that. Like I had like a little bit of a flashback. It was crazy. Um, I don't know though. I don't think, it's, kind of I think, my- oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, last year, I feel like everyone was talking about that. I forget what Hurricanes player it was, but he had that lacrosse goal he did a couple times. They were all, like, amazed every time. And this one, it was kind of similar. Like, he had the lacrosse pass, but it was very much just, like, that same Michigan play. Just Mm -hmm. you never thought you would see it in the NHL, I feel like. Yeah. I don't know. Pretty crazy. I do agree with you about the goal of the year situation, though. Um, I saw that you had Mm -hmm. some thoughts about the games that Marshawn missed after his suspension. What's what's up? What, What are your thoughts? Yeah, so, you know, the Bruins went 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Um, I thought the worst of those games, obviously, was the outright loss to Detroit, just because they are one spot ahead of them in the standings. Detroit is good this year. Like, they're definitely – they're better than the Bruins. <laughs> but, I don't know. I just thought, again, I know you're without Marshawn, so it sucks. I was just expecting a little more still. But I think we've said it so many times before on the show. They're just the average this year, so – then they won yeah. that very scrappy game over Nashville, two to zero. That's where Bergeron broke his nose. They were the Nashville players were really beating around on Bergeron, and I don't yeah. know if it has to do with the fact that like Brad wasn't in the lineup, and he's kind of is someone that you know would go stand up for. If anyone, he's going to get into a fight if you're going to go at his captain. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It was just a scrappy game. I'm glad they pulled out the win. Obviously, Patrice is fine. I know he got surgery. Now he's got the fishbowl going on. Mm-hmm. But it was it was solid. And then I was pretty happy, to be honest, that we at least got one point out of the loss to Tampa Bay in overtime, three to two. Mm-hmm. 
just because not only were they without Marshawn, they were without McAvoy. And Tampa's such a good team, you know, like from start, like top of the roster to the bottom. They have one of the best goaltenders. So I was okay with taking the one point loss. I just, I don't know, that Detroit Red Wings game, they just looked lifeless. That kind of killed me. Yeah. I, um, I'm glad that you also put uh, like the, about the people who have been called up from Providence and stuff. How do you feel what well, the team has been able to adjust to all of these, you know, things that have been going on, the lack of chemistry in the lines and stuff like that. Like, obviously we've said it before on this show that this isn't the season I think anybody expected from them, mm-hmm. um, but they're taking it in stride. They're dealing it with how they're going to, what, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, you know, like you said, I think this team does just kind of lack chemistry. I did like seeing, I will say, I like Taylor Hall on that top line, and I feel like he felt comfortable on my top line. I mean, yeah, your fucking line mates are Patrice Bergeron and Pasta, so I'd hope so. But all of a sudden, like, just even last night's game, I know I saw that you tweeted that you were watching that game too. Like, yeah. it's like any chemistry that there was now that they're back to what they're at with Marshawn in the lineup, like, the only production you're getting is from that top line. There's no secondary scoring. That second line has no chemistry whatsoever. Taylor Hall, like he's like a ghost when he's on the second line. Like those three games without Marshawn, I feel like it was the most we saw him like actually being a presence on the ice. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe if anything, you drop pasta down to that second line with him, but also like pasta's not having his best season, but you should not have to mess with that top line to get fucking secondary scoring. Like also, it's insane. Like the- yeah, the DeBrusque situation doesn't help either. Oh, no. Like, I think they said makes, last night. It makes it so much worse. No, so much worse. I wish they would just, like, at this point, get a trade over with. There's been so many rumors about what the trades are going to be. At this point, like, I don't think it's beneficial for anyone. And I know it's tough to get those things done because you want the right return. But at the same time, like, he's playing on average 10 minutes on ice every night since that rumors came out. He dropped down to the fourth line. The fourth line's already shit. It's like, mm-hmm. he doesn't want to be here. Like, I yeah. don't know. It, that's, that's what I was just going to say. It's like, at what point do you just bench the kid? Because he clearly doesn't want to be here. You're not building anything for the future. You're not building chemistry. This isn't going to be a set line forever. And it's like, I realize that he's a talent. Mm -hmm. to a certain extent but it's like at what point do you just start working on something else or like because I mean we don't have any we don't know what's going on in the locker room obviously because we're not there yeah we clearly don't have any hatred towards him but there's no way to feel about how his teammates feel about him wanting to leave which like in these situations usually there isn't any like animosity or anything like that but it certainly can't be beneficial no, I can't imagine it is, especially when you're having these losses like they did against the Red Wings. Like, Tampa, like, if they just had one more goal from someone else, like, that could have changed the whole whole thing. Because, again, like, they have, like, these guys like Oscar Steen. He's looked so good. Like, he should be getting regular time on ice. We have plenty of guys in Providence who, yeah, I don't think they're going to be, like, this complete game changer. Like, the season's going to turn around. But they should at least be getting a chance, especially when you have a guy who – doesn't want to be here he's getting so little time on ice when he is on the ice he's not doing much like last night I think the biggest thing was the puck like went off his skate accidentally and went right over to a Canucks player I don't know it's just like it's gotten to the point where I think it just rip off the band-aid make a fucking trade (laughs) yeah like I think the longer they wait the more his value goes down because teams are gonna see you know him not playing to his full capability because obviously he's not playing somewhere he wants to be you're risking injury and also like I don't want to say he has a bad attitude because he doesn't we're both on his side but it's like at some point you sort of do have a sour attitude playing somewhere you don't want to play and it's like well a lot of teams clearly don't give a crap about their players and their attitude and what they do off the ice it's it doesn't help when you're you know shelling out money or you know draft picks or whatever for someone that's for damn sure No, yeah, like, I feel bad for him because I'm like, he wants to be out of here and it's probably tough to find motivation to get on the ice every night and, like, give your best performance when, one, you're getting very little time on the ice. Like, two, you know what the media is saying about you. You know how, like, because obviously the front office does not love Jake Bruss. That's been pretty clear over the last couple seasons. And three, like, again, what would his motivation be besides, like, I want to get traded, but they're not even giving me the chance to, like, showcase what I can do. So... I don't know. I feel like it's just kind of put in a tough situation, but also you have to think about the rest of the team. They just want to win games. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, I don't want to give you the time to show 
what you can do because you've had the season to do that but it's like you're not helping my team you're not helping my team chemistry you're not helping me get anywhere so why would I want to play you exactly I think it's just a mess and I know they're playing tonight in Edmonton I think that would be I think we said last week the best landing spot for him because he is an Edmonton kid that's where his dad played Mm -hmm. would be the Oilers I don't know what that trade would look like but me and Lauren were like, maybe he packs his bags and hopes. I was just that gonna say, just leave him in Edmonton. <laughs> we should, I, I literally have in my notes right here to ask you about the game tonight, and I was gonna be like, maybe they should just leave him there. Like, obviously, he wants to be there. Like, he likes the Oilers. He grew up a fan of their team. Like, his dad's still involved in the organization. Like, I don't know. It seems got like the perfect, especially given like the other trade scenarios I've seen. I'm like, yeah, let, let's leave him with the Oilers. Yeah, just let him let him suit up for them. Yeah, literally, just make a jersey <laughs> swap real quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also do see that we have some notes about Tuka Rask practicing this week. I want to know what you think that this means for the goalie situation in Boston. Yeah, you know, I feel like this conversation has been going on now for a few weeks, but Tuka finally did talk to me and he was like, I'm going to be playing this season. Like, I want to be playing for the Bruins, which we've heard, but now it sounds like he's ahead of schedule. So the question is like, okay, so what does this mean for Swayman? What does this mean for Omark? Because like, it would be easy to just say, oh, send down Omark because he hasn't been the best out of the two of them. But at the same time, like Jeremy Swayman only had like nine AHL games total experience. And he is so young that it would not hurt him to get more experience down there. That's just like a tough conversation to have, especially when you have Omark under contract, I think for four years for like 20 million. It's tough. And like I saw Marshawn was talking about it. He was like, yeah, like obviously Tuka would add so much to this team because he is one of the best goalies. But at the same time, like goaltending hasn't been like this big issue for us this season. Like, yeah, like both Swayman and, and although Swayman's had really good like last six games, I feel like. But Omar, like, yeah, he hasn't had the best, but never has he been the difference maker in any games where like, he lost that game for them. And like Brad Marshawn was saying that he was like, goaltending has been the least of our issues this season I know there was kind of a question mark coming into it and I know we talked about it too like oh what's it going to be I don't think we've ever said anything bad about the goaltending season so far just because they have they've been the kind of the backbone for this team that lacks everywhere else and yeah Tuka is one of the best but then like it does suck like because I think it would have to come down to you send Swayman down to Providence. And it is nice to get him development because I feel like his rebound control is still something he needs to work on, which is fine because he's so young and still adjusting to the NHL. But also, I don't know, like he's so used to the NHL now. So it kind of like seems like that would suck to have to send him down. But that's like because you can't send Omark down. You're paying him that much. Yeah. See, I do kind of disagree with you there, though. Like as much as it sucks that you're paying someone something I'm pro like always writing the hot hand always take a dub and he is playing better than Allmark right now so like I do think that you ride that hot hand and it's like I I don't think that like I don't think that that would be good for his confidence I think that if you send a young kid down who's playing better than someone else it's like you know like when you were a little kid and like another part like you were a good player and someone else needed playing time like it's not good for your confidence and like yeah they're adults and they're a pro and stuff like that and it like shouldn't be that way but honestly that's kind of how it is and it's like you in my opinion I think you always ride the hot hand you chase the dub and you build for the future and he clearly is like the future out of the two of them yeah it sucks that you're paying someone that much money but honestly if you're older and you are being paid that much money maybe you do need to be humbled and sent down to Providence for a hot second like imagine having a 20 million dollar goalie fucking playing in Providence well, that was like when I was with Providence, whatever it was, a couple years ago, when David Backus got sent down there, everyone was like in the press box, like, oh, we got the $40 million man coming in to play for the AHL Bruins, which obviously mm-hmm. he ended up just be like, fuck this, I'm not playing, like, which I don't blame him. I would also say the same thing. Like, you're a fucking NHL veteran. Like, you've had all these great years behind you. I would also be like, uh, no, I'm all set. I'm done. But with like Omar, it's so hard because I actually got in a fight with someone on Twitter about this because they're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, let's just trade away Omar. I was like, he has a no trade clause, you fucking moron. I was like, you think that would be my first thought too? Like, oh, let's just trade him away. Let's get some prospects so we can put Tuka right in there. And I'm like, no, it does not work that way when he has no trade. Like someone's got to get sent down. And at the same Mm -hmm. time, like you also want to have someone with experience somewhere because God forbid, like you can't just ride with Tuka Rask who's just coming off of being injured for this long and then rookie swing because God forbid one of them gets injured and then you just have that one guy 
So I'm like, no, it does not make sense even to trade away Allmark, even if you could. Yeah, it's true. Um, I see you have a couple other thoughts here about what's what's up with Mike Milbury. I didn't see that. Oh my God. It was on 98.5 today. So <laughs> that gives you an idea of what this conversation went like. Mike Milbury, mind you, in the description, I only listened to the clip of it that I saw on Twitter. They called him an NHL analyst, which I was like, that's generous. That's very I would not give that to anyone at 98.5. <laughs> they like never talk Mike about hockey. Milbury no so I was like okay that already tells me all I need to know that you went for NHL analysis you're going to Mike Milbury anyways yeah. he said because maybe I should be an NLL analyst <laughs> you're you are you're one now that's all it takes <laughs> anyways <laughs> But so he went on because they're, of course, 95 skies falling. The Bruins are terrible. Sell the whole team, whatever, you know, the usual shtick when they don't actually watch a fucking second of it. Mike Milbury went on and said that the Bruins should consider trading Bergeron or Marchand. <laughs> I Four. don't give a fuck how bad this team is. Connor McDavid. <laughs> what? what and I like tweeted it because I was like Jesus fucking Christ and I was like oh it's Mike Milbury that makes sense then but then someone responded to me like actually if the team is on the rate that they're going on we absolutely should consider that or at least consider trading pasta I was like I'm sorry are we watching the same team the Bruins aren't outright bad and the top line's definitely not our issue and I get like oh well we want to build for the future then if we're going to suck now I don't know if you noticed Bruins suck at building for the future. Look at all their failed prospects over the last few years. Look at the 2015 draft. The like we have Jeremy Swain, we have Charlie McAvoy, that rocks. Like those are good things to come out of it. I don't trust the fucking Bruins to make trades for random like first round picks. You're trying to fuck it up just like they fucked up the last however many years. And I was like, I am not trading any of our top line. I don't give a fuck. You guys need to get over yourselves. I don't know where you have been if you just start becoming a Bruins fan. They sucked before, like 2004, 2005. Clearly, you weren't paying attention. Things were so much worse. Right now, the Penguins are like seventh or eighth. Like, they're one either one above us or one below us. You don't hear I was saying, oh, let's trade Crosby. What the fuck? Yeah, well, like, that's I, the thing, too, is it's it's like – the city of Boston would literally burn down. I'm like, what the fuck? You people cried when we traded Mookie. You cried when Tom Brady left. Patrice Bergeron specifically. Him and Marshawn are like two. Patrice is the longest tenured athlete in Boston at this point. Brad's not far behind. You literally would burn the city down. If God forbid they ever made that trade, you would be the first ones to go and criticize the Bruins front office, which you should criticize them if they ever made that move. But I was like, are you fucking serious? You people are seriously that, like, recency bias that you're saying, which granted is, again, Mike Milbury, but I'm like, trade away Ber- your captain and Brad Marchand, who is the best player on your team. Just they because would never an average team. They would never. Like, they're just average. Get over they- it. Like, get over yourselves. I think that that's, I actually am so glad that you said that, though, because I think that that's my least favorite thing about the city of Boston and their sports fans is that it's fucking trophy or bust for these people because you guys are so fucking spoiled with all of your fucking Super Bowls and your Stanley Cups and your World Series and all that bullshit. Like, shut the fuck up and learn how to be mediocre. It happens sometimes. And it doesn't mean that the world is fucking burning and the sky is falling. It fucking happens. And it happens so that you can get better. Shut the fuck up, people of Boston. It is not always fucking ring or bust. I'm so sick of this. And it's like, it happens all the time in any sport. Like, you can see it with people... Before the Patriots were leading the AFC, people were like, oh my God, you know, like all of this crap early in the season, like bitching about like fucking having a rookie quarterback and shit. Like, shut mm-hmm. up, shut the fuck up, shut up. And what blows my mind about it with the Bruins is like most of it, of course, is coming from those older people that do listen to a lot of the sports radio, whatever. I'm like, do you guys not remember the Bruins, the early 2000s? Like they were barely on TV. No one was paying attention because they were so bad. And now like, they're not amazing. Like, yeah, I don't think we've said so many times they're not going to the Stanley Cup by any means, but they're still like right now, like at least in a chance for the wild card and you never know what happens after that. Like, 
and they're just like, oh, sell everything. Everything's over. Like, this season's a bust. It's fucking December 9th. <laughs> well, and they still have talent, you know? Like, you have Bergeron. You have Marshawn. You have Charlie Coyle, who's proven he can play. Taylor Hall has proven he can play. Jeremy Swayman has a really promising future. You're getting fucking Tuka back. Give it a fucking year or two. Like, chill out. And, like, if this is Bergeron's last year, because I know there is rumblings of it, imagine if we traded Patrice Bergeron and what was his last year I would I would be so much more mad about that than the Mookie trade than anything that I think is the most insulting thing like I thought it was bad enough when they didn't bring back Chara I do think it was the right choice in the end but I think this is such a different situation like Patrice is still consistently producing he's still one of the top members of this team he brings that leadership and you would be so stupid to be like hmm Bye. <laughs> All right, my question for you. Would you be more likely yes. to light the city on fire if they got rid of Bergeron or if they didn't sign Devers long term? <laughs> because I know Bergeron's window is eventually going to close soon. But Patrice is my favorite athlete of all time. So I generally think I'd be more likely to set the city on fire over. <laughs> that's how passionately I feel about him I'm so glad that I just got to ask you that question that was great um (laughs) any other question (laughs) any other NHL thoughts I have one that I added into our stuff that I will mention if you don't have any more um my only other thing is just about the Vancouver Canucks I know they just hired Bruce Boudreau and he's been awesome for them granted it's again it's been like three or four games but they've already won all these games. It looks so much better. The team looks more energized. I fucking hate the Canucks, but there's a lot of Canucks fans that I like. So I am happy for them. And also I like this thought because I'm like, Jake DeBrusque, you could go to Vancouver because I do like their roster. I would like to see I do love the Vancouver, Vancouver roster. I do love the Vancouver roster. There's lots I of cute boys on it. it. He would be put into a good situation. So it's true. And, and there's some, they're, they're pretty young. Yeah, they're a young team. Yeah. Um, my only other NHL thought this week before we get into our interview is, I don't know if you saw this, the Kraken did an, in, they hired an indigenous artist to create jerseys yes. for them. I'm going, I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly. Please don't come for me. Um, I believe it was a Karuk artist, Karuk artist. Um, I'm not sure how to say the tribe's name, but that was the artist that made the jerseys. I love them. I think this is such a cool idea. I love that Seattle is, you know, Seattle's like a pretty, you know, woke city or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I love that they are sort of taking this like chance to educate and change culture even more in Seattle through hockey. I think that that's awesome. Super inspiring. Um, And I thought these jerseys were really cool. Yeah, I saw those jerseys. I love those jerseys. And I just love what Seattle's done. I feel like they're like the, per- granted they are in their first year. So like they haven't had much criticism yet, like in terms of just like PR and how they handle media and stuff. But I feel like they're doing everything right so far in terms of that. Like they're so smart with like what it is like to make sure they include the community. And I wish we could see more of that for all these other NHL teams. Cause there's so many NHL teams in like such cool places. And I wish they would incorporate that more but I just think Seattle's doing a great job so far in terms of that. Yeah, I agree. I could not agree more, actually. Um, we are going to, if you are watching this on YouTube, we are going to quickly hop into our interview with our guest this week to talk some hoops, Molly Morrison. So if you are watching this on YouTube, we are going to switch to that now. Welcoming our guest this week, Molly Morrison, social media personality and host of Burners and Basketball and Made in Memphis. You can follow her at Molly Hannah M and Made in Memphis on Twitter. Um, Molly, how's it going? Happy to be here. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Heard you broke your table. Sad news, but thanks for joining us anyway and making a contraption so that you can join. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I think first, um, my question is, where are you from and how did you get into sports? I know that you do some stuff with the Grizzlies and stuff like that. So how, how'd you wind up there? Yeah, so I'm from Memphis. Um, I kind of a weird story. So I've been like tweeting about the Grizzlies since I was 12. And I started this account called Made in Memphis. Um, I'm sure if a lot of people are familiar with it, because I talk about it, I literally don't shut up about it. But 
Um, it's kind of important for my background. So I ran that account anonymously until I was 18. I didn't plan to reveal myself when I was 18, but it was kind of like a freak out moment. Like, oh my God, I've built this account. It has all these followers and like, they don't know who I am. I, so it was kind of cool because I did this accidental like social experiment. I mean, mm -hmm. I was assumed to be a man for however long and you know people were not mean to me really like at all <laughs> so it was it was kind of a cool it was still for the most part really cool though and empowering to tell everyone who I was um yeah so I'm back in Memphis I went to Indiana University for a year and a half and now I'm back and I'm a senior where are you at in Memphis just Memphis <laughs> Oh, oh, I meant like what school? Is that the school you're at? <laughs> yeah, University of Memphis. Oh, okay, okay, cool. They yeah. had, um, they've had some talent come out of there, I feel like. You guys had a quarterback in the draft like a couple years ago who I don't think made it very far. I don't remember who it was though. We have some, we had like Anthony Miller. Um, yeah. And here's where my knowledge isn't great. <laughs> <laughs> but we have, it's a big basketball city. So there's a lot of really good basketball talent to come out of here. How'd you get into sports? Like, how'd you get into like falling into like starting to tweet at 12 years old? Yeah. Um, honestly, when I first became like a Grizzlies fan, I treated it the 12 year old girl treats anything like One Direction, Taylor Swift, who I also am obsessed with. And I feel like y'all both are too. So. Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, and I didn't really know shit about basketball, honestly. I was just, oh my God, I love them. They're great. And yeah, there was this era of Memphis basketball called the grit and grind era. And that was pretty cool. Um, growing up with that, just seeing a team kind of emulate and reflect a city and vice versa. I think it was a really beautiful thing. And I fell in love with it and I've loved it ever since. So that's awesome. And so I know you said you got your start, like you were anonymous up until you're 18. Once you said like, oh, like, here's who I actually am. Did you get like, what were the responses? Like, was it a weird reaction? Did people start treating you like differently, like right off the bat? Yeah. So like, I say it went viral, which is uh, really funny because at the time, like, I think it probably got like 2000 likes. And at the time that felt like <laughs> as viral as I would ever get. And so on so no I really didn't get mean things said to me um I because it was a kind of a smaller audience it was pretty local it maybe mm -hmm. got out a little nationally but for the most part people were very nice um and any negative comment I would see I think would make me sad which I quickly shook so yeah people were cool um I mean I was 18 and Memphis <laughs> Like, you know, Grizzlies Twitter is not a toxic place, like some fan base is probably. Yeah. So it was cool. So I actually heard something that I didn't know about you. I heard that you got in a Twitter fight with fucking Jake Paul, and I need to know how that started and like how it ended. Oh my God. <laughs> that was funny. That was really funny. So, so I tweeted, I tweeted, um, I am begging society to stop paying attention to the Paul brothers I think something like that along those lines and like okay honestly I'm so used to shit posting because I've been doing it since I was 12 so I do need to realize now that like when I say stuff like it's not just a thought of mine it's a public <laughs> statement and it will be circulated so so that got like a ton of likes um like a ton of likes which is the reason I mentioned likes is because I think he like didn't like his like comeback like didn't get more likes than the original tweet which is funny. <laughs> um and so he was like you're giving us you're giving us more attention by tweeting this dumbass and like <laughs> like he was right I mean <laughs> like that's the first don't, time you'll don't admit it. it like he's Jake Paul <laughs> so I automatically win but he was right <laughs> I was giving him more attention so I made some so I think my comeback was like your brother filmed this was kind of really I was like your brother literally filmed a dead body and somehow you're less likable 
<laughs> and I think that was like not great, but it's okay. It's true. It's true though. I mean, it's it's facts. Um, you can tell a lie. <laughs> yeah. I also heard that you uh when like there was like some Ben Simmons drama that you had some funny tweets about that. Like, what's like the craziest NBA drama you've gotten into? I am strategic with like what I like. For example, my biggest fear in life is Kevin Durant. Like trying to dunk on me on Twitter. I would literally like never show my face again. So I feel like, I mean, just, just the bigger I get, the more, the more I do think about those things, I still make jokes, but I've never been someone who makes like jokes that come after like, you know, it's, it's all harmless. So obviously we're sort of, you know, a a decent amount of almost 30 games into the NBA season. What are your thoughts so far? Um, that's a good question. Uh, the NBA season, I mean, I always just love the NBA season. I think this season's kind of fun because it's a mess. I mean, there's not really a clear team. Obviously the Warriors and the Suns are like the best right now, but there's not, you know, there's so many factors. There's not a clear team that is just going to go to the finals. So I think that's fun. Everyone kind of sucks which I think is fun. Like <laughs> every team sort of sucks. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cool, fun storylines right now. A lot of young talent, yeah. such as my Grizzlies. So yeah, yeah, John Morant's killing it. He is, he is. He's. I, I have a John Morant jersey like right there. <laughs> oh my God, and I literally don't. <laughs> That's so funny. I have such a crush on him. Um, yeah, like huge crush on him. I, I think it's funny that you, I have, I actually have a couple of questions about stuff that you just brought up. I think my first one being, I think everyone expected, you know, last season, the Nets obviously had some injuries and stuff. And then this year, you know, almost, almost healthy. And I think people expected them to just like secure that like top spot in the NBA rankings. What do you think about them so far since they've had this sort of super team and everything that's kind of caused it to collapse for a minute? I think it's tricky because you build this team on the idea of three guys that are dominant and the idea that, oh, one of them gets hurt, we're fine because we still have two of them. Um, Mm -hmm. So you hear that and you think, okay, so if Kyrie's like um, protesting and refuses to play because he won't get vaccinated, they'll be fine because they still have KD and Harden. And obviously they're, I mean, I don't know what their record is, but they're, they're not as good as they were probably projected to be, but they're not awful. And I think that just the politics of Kyrie is probably what's not helping them get to that next step. In my opinion, I think that whole situation is just weird. I think it's one of the weirdest. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I love- this is, this is a pro pet podcast. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> my, my, you want to say hi? Oh, my God. Oh. That's my baby. My that, was, that was so my funny. My. Oh, my God. Um, that's so cute. Yeah, the Nets have really struggled against teams who are who have been over 500 this year that I think that's where my struggle with them is at is it's everyone else. They obviously have, like, sort of handily beaten. But, like, my issue is, is that, you know, the longer you – go into the season, the more teams you're going to have to play that people are getting better. You know, they're establishing that chemistry and stuff like that. So I think that that's been the weird thing for the Nets for me is like, they're really struggling against good teams. Um, But you did mention that you think everyone's, you know, kind of sucking right now and there's really no team who's a standout to you. So if you had to have a too soon prediction, who would your too soon prediction be? Warriors. Warriors. Fun. Just for fun. Because like, why not? Okay. Yeah. So I saw today that Steph Curry is, I think, like 10 threes away from the NBA record. What do you think yeah. about his season this year? Because like last year, I mean, Steph's great. Steph's fantastic. He has been for a majority of career, especially of his career, especially coming from Davidson. And last year, the Warriors just didn't, I, I expected them to be better. And I didn't expect them to be um, as good as they are this year. What do you, what do you think about their team this year? I mean, they're really good. I think that the whole entire world dodged like the biggest bullet in the world when they drafted James Wiseman, um, because if they had LaMelo right now, we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. I, mm-hmm. in my opinion, I truly, obviously a big made more sense in terms of like what they needed. But when you have 
a talent like that, you know, and just mm -hmm, putting him on that team felt like it would have really, and I think people see that now. So, I mean, they're really good and they've got some really good young guys as well. Like it's not just Steph and a bunch of, you know, relevant people. I mean, Poole has been playing really well. So, but really Steph is the MVP right now. And I think that's what it is about. Like, despite whatever young talent they have, MVP means what player is the most valuable to their team. And it's just absolutely him. I mean, there's yeah. no, one, there's no one like that. So, yeah, I agree. I have, I have one last question for you. I know Sarah has a few for you as well. Um, obviously we live in Boston. So I want to ask you about the Celtics. I originally at the end of last year thought that, you know, there were going to be some moves in the organization. Didn't quite expect what happened to happen. I thought Marcus Smart was going to leave and they were going to try and find another third just because there were those chemistry issues and stuff. And clearly that's still happening. And these guys are locked up for quite some time. What have you seen from the Celtics and what do you think about their season? And what do you think like is not quite clicking for them chemistry wise? Um, I think that there's a lot of pressure on the Celtics to be good. I think that there's the question of, you know, Jalen Brown and Tatum position wise. Um, there's was chatter, you know, did they need to bring on a guard like Ben Simmons, which I'm not sure is the solution. I don't think they need to necessarily get rid of one of those guys. I mean, both of those guys are just so good. I just think it's go about time and building for them. Honestly, I haven't been able to watch the Celtics a ton this season. So I feel like I'm not like an expert on the matter, but Jason mm -hmm. Tatum, if I'm building a franchise right now, he is absolutely one of the players that I am yeah. looking for. So, I mean, I'm excited. I think the Celtics are always just kind of not quite meeting expectations. So we'll see, but yeah. Yeah. I expected them to build around Brown and Tatum too. And I, I totally expected Marcus Smart to leave, but I was definitely wrong. Yeah. I mean, Kemba leaving was, was good. So mm -hmm. I think that was the player that for some reason people were acting like was like way better than he was. So, yeah. So Sarah, kind you... of veering away. Oh, that's okay. From like <laughs> basketball. My question for you would be, I know you're still in school now. It's kind of hard to answer this question because in sports, you like never know where you're going to end up, but like, what would your dream job be like five years down the road? Um, right. <laughs> I just want to I honestly like I feel like Shay Serrano who I love um he always just tweets like I just want to make cool things with cool people and I feel like honestly that's where I'm at I love just creating things I've always I mean people a lot of people don't know this about me but I am a writer before all else like I have written a book before um that will probably oh my god yeah dude whoa uh, so I I would love to like write someday I'd love to have a show like I just want to make cool things that like people can enjoy about things I'm passionate about so I don't know there's no like oh I want to be on tv and like yeah like I just want to yeah do cool things and like make people enjoy things that they're passionate about that I'm also passionate about so yeah that's a good answer. I like that answer. So that kind of leads into my next question, just being what would be your advice for like young girls that want to get into sports and then just those like just young girls in general? Because I feel like you really built your platform so quickly. Like your growth has been insane. I feel like over the last year, especially. Yeah, it, it has been. Um, <laughs> it's like weird to me every day, but I think the advice I would give to young woman, Milo, shut up, baby. <laughs> okay. Um, the advice I would give to young girls and women is just to keep putting out the content. And sometimes I know that they will be discredited and there will be people who are jumping on them, but just don't let people tell you what to do and how to navigate this industry. Don't, if you want to clap back at somebody, don't listen to the guy that says, Hey, like you're better than that. Um, don't give this guy attention. Like literally you do you, people are going to try to tell you how to lead your life. And the best thing you can do is be authentic and don't be afraid to turn the comments off, but also don't be afraid to tell someone to fuck off. So <laughs> yeah. Like Agreed. That. Big time agree. 
Mm-hmm. So then our next most important question, because this is Saturdays and seltzers, what is your favorite seltzer? <laughs> oh my God. Um, I'm not, like, honestly, the only seltzers I drink are White Claws. I know that's kind of like such a basic. Little White Claw girl. <laughs> but I like, what's my favorite White Claw flavor? Probably watermelon. Are y'all drinking them right now? Wait, I have some. Y'all should have told me to drink one this whole time. Ah, this is Saturdays and Seltzers. You got to drink a Seltzy. I don't know if you saw, though, but they're actually selling, like, full packs of just the watermelon now. Are you serious? Yeah, I saw them in the grocery store the other day. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Ooh. Wait, you guys, yes. I'm going to crack I'm gonna crack a Seltzer for the podcast. <laughs> She's going to crack <laughs> one open before we let her go. I love it. Cheers. Is oh, it wait, watermelon, though? Like, my whole apartment right now. Um... I'm just gonna grab ugh, mango worst flavor it's fine you know what <laughs> let's do a lemon i'm glad we're encouraging lemon here <laughs> i'm about to go to the grizzlies oh, bakers game let's sing my mess of an apartment all right yeah, this so, is your pregame yeah this is your pregame this is my one last question while you sip your bev predictions for the game tonight because by the time this airs it'll be over and we'll see if you were right Oh, Lakers, Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to get, <laughs> I think we'll get blown out. I think we were on a roll without jaw. I think the Lakers are finding momentum right now. Absolutely. Yeah, they and crushed the I Celtics think... the other night. Yeah, so that I watched that game. I, I guess I did watch the Celtics that night. Um, and I think that those are going to clash, and I think they're going to have a really good game. We'll see. I mean, I'm just excited to watch the game. And yeah, cheers. Cheers. Well, thank <laughs> cheers you for joining us. That. Yeah. Thanks for cheers joining us. This is getting blown out. Here we go. <laughs> um, have fun at the game. We'll see how your prediction goes. Don't forget to follow Molly on Instagram <laughs> at Molly underscore Morrison and on Twitter at Molly Hanna M. And thanks for joining us. Thank you. We're going to move into our pop culture stuff here. Um, My pop culture thing of the week, I don't know if you saw this, but a high school football team meant to FaceTime someone and it was one number off and they wound up accidentally FaceTiming Tom Brady in the locker room. Oh my God, I did not see that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so cool. So like I guess that they like like this like high school, middle school football team or something like that meant to like FaceTime one of the like their players or something like that. And his number was one number off from Tom Brady and they had no idea and Tom Brady answered the FaceTime. That's kind of crazy that he's answering FaceTime calls from numbers he doesn't know. I don't even do that. <laughs> hey, I do. Why not? Oh, I never, I don't even answer the phone in general, so. <laughs> nah, I feel like FaceTime's easier because you know it's not spam. That's true, but I'm also always scared if I get a FaceTime call for someone I don't know, because you never know you're going to open it up to. Nah, I'm all, I love the smoke, you know I love the smoke. Mm. Um, so I thought that that was really cool, like imagine like me thinking you're calling someone and then fucking Tom Brady answering the phone. Like what do you know what the reaction was? Like I think I'm just like I might yeah, honestly whole, I'm just hung up. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole video. There's a whole video of him like Why on FaceTime with them. That? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, do you have any pop culture shit of the week? I don't. It was a pretty quiet week, I feel like, in terms of that stuff. Okay. Um, I know we each have a tea party segment. What is yours this week? Because I know what it is, but I am excited to hear what you have to say about it. Okay, what is this, the third time we've talked about Tristan Thompson on this podcast? I don't understand how this man operates. I'm like, you know, you are so famous. You have a child with one of the most famous people in America. Like, I don't even know what it was. He got, what was it? Like, someone was messaging him and like, you need to give me fucking child support. Nope, I would rather pay you off 75000 to abort this kid. You're not getting a cent out of me. Like, all this nonsense over Instagram DMs, obviously. I just... How do you also, like... How do you also be like, yeah, no, I'm not paying for, like, my pet sperm that you now have? I'm like, do you not, like... If you know this is, like, something you're going to be doing regularly, use a fucking condom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's what I was going to say, is it's, like, 
you get caught cheating all the time and you're still clearly doing it. Also, do you know how hard it is to get pregnant? I didn't know this until my senior year of college. There is like a 48 to 72 hour window where you can actually get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And it's like you ovulate for 24 hours, but like sperm lives for like 48 to 72. It's fucking hard to get pregnant. And like you, like this is your third child from a different person. Like I know that like sex education in America is extremely lacking, but we all know that if you like are going to tap it, wrap it. Especially if you're Tristan Thompson, like, dude, just Mm -hmm. fucking stay in your house at this point. Like, stop, stop. I hate Tristan. I don't even have like this huge love for Khloe Kardashian. I think she's kind of a dumbass at this point. She is a dumbass. But I'm like, they still have a kid together. Like, have some respect, you dick. Also, Uh. you're like in a relationship, and this was after you got caught hooking up with her younger sister's fucking best friend. And he's been caught since what? Then, like, 10 other times? <laughs> how was someone not pregnant sooner honestly and the fact is is that this is like these are the times he got caught mm-hmm. imagine oh my like, god the he's probably he... cheating on her as we speak but, i mean <laughs> if she gets back together again with him i have no sympathy no sympathy i would say i lost sympathy for a while ago but that definitely that would be the end <laughs> when i saw her put out a statement today when she was like fans please don't attack me it's like you kind of deserve it at this point like, you are fucking up your yeah. kid's life. Like, I know that you, like, it, it reminds me of that scene in The Little Mermaid when she's like, but daddy, I love him. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, what kind of example? Her sympathy has closed. It's like, what kind of, like, I know that you, like, think you're doing the right thing and it's like, we're not her, we're not in her situation or whatever. And I'm like, I get yeah. you think you're doing the right thing for your daughter, but I promise you, like, that ain't it like showing her that like someone can treat her like that over and over and over again with like family friends and like knocking someone up and like all those sorts of things that ain't it no the kardashians just have really shit taste in men other than pete davidson yeah i say pete davidson's the one exception (laughs) yeah like travis scott's probably not even real yeah travis scott's a murderer kanye's insane like fucking tristan thompson like what the fuck (laughs) Fuck all of that. Although Kendall Jenner sick. kinda went off what she did. Kendall Jenner went off what she did at Harry Styles, but I also don't know how real that one was either. Can we talk about how Harry Styles took Kendall's virginity and I have never been so jealous of a virgin ever? I didn't know that. Yes. Are you kidding me? That <laughs> no. <was> all- <laughs> I'm Kendall Jenner, so like you already have shit you could ever have in the world then you get to say you lost your virgin harry styles some people are just like god when you were born they're like this one's gonna have a great fucking life it's gonna be so easy and she you know what she still fucks up sometimes so i was like god damn it kendall if you just shut your mouth which out of all the kardashians i guess she does probably shut her mouth the most so ups to her but still (laughs) you have it all i did not know that yeah, she's the only one with decent taste in men in the family. Like, didn't she date um mm-hmm. fucking Ace? She dated ASAP Rocky, Harry Styles, yep. Ben Simmons. I'm not in on the Ben Simmons thing. Um, Devin Booker, love Devin Booker. Like, she has like the yeah, best taste too. in men out of all of them. Also, I saw a tweet one time that you could create like a Team USA Olympic roster for basketball out of her ex boyfriends, and it's so fucking true. Good for her. Good for yeah. her. She like good for her. All right, she has the best taste. She's my favorite Kardashian, I think. And it's, I mean, she's annoying, but like I, she's my, if I had to like gun to my head, pick a favorite them, one. Yeah. And she's the prettiest them, one. I feel like she's the least annoying, problematic. Oh yeah. yeah. Definitely the prettiest Definitely the prettiest. prettiest. One. <laughs> yep. Um, so that is our tea party segment of the week. Sarah, do you have any tweets? I know that I have something to address super quick. So in the last few weeks, I've gotten in trouble on Twitter because so I tweeted a couple weeks ago that I was like in love with the Jags tight end Dan Arnold, which like is true. I had no idea he was married. And then everyone was like, oh, he's married, like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, shit. And then I tweeted again, which I wound up deleting just because I don't want these guys' wives to find like anything that I have to say because I feel bad that I don't know they're married. But I tweeted and I was like, Cooper Cup has no business being this attractive, like yada, yada. And someone was like, 
I like deleted it and someone messages me and they were like, one day you will find an athlete to crush on who isn't taken. Don't give up. Ha ha. Which is so true because it's like now Sergio Perkovic and Cooper Cup and Dan Arnold. And it's like, why is every man that I'm ever like last night at the bar, I was flirting. Okay. I'm going to tell you who it was when we get off of this video call. Okay. Because I know you know who he is. Well, who his brother is, but I was flirting with this guy like mad hard for like hours like cute we were taking shots together hanging out with his friends he was hanging out with my friends like those sorts of things and I like got to the point where like asked him for his number because I was leaving or whatever and he was like oh I have a girlfriend and I'm like what (laughs) I'm like are you fucking kidding me so I'm just like what is wrong like why do I like and it's like I'm not like that like I came from like a family where that was like very much like my biggest like childhood issue like those sorts of things so like I'm not in on that stuff but I'm just like why is every man taken that I'm attracted to like every single fucking one so this guy called me out but it made me feel like a little bit better (laughs) so I I didn't even see your original tweet so that's my tweet that's all I have this week for one time we have one tweet I would say I think What do I have? Oh, well, one, it was, I think it was yesterday now. I made some, oh, because my friend Ashley texted me and was like, trying to communicate with you. was like talking, like when I talked to boys, she was like, I text you, you don't answer. I go on Instagram, you have some dumbass random like sports highlight on your story at the same time that I know you're like not reading my sex. And then someone, because I tweeted, I was like, she's pretty right. And someone responded, I was like, oh yeah, don't mess with puck bunnies. But one, he misspelled it and put punk bunnies, which just, like, gave me a whole different, like, image. I was like, hell yeah, I'm so punk. (laughs) But two, I was like, um, also, I know more than you because I went through his replies. He's one of those people that, like, tweets at teams. Like, obviously, he has, like, 10 followers, whatever. He's, like, tweeting at teams, has, like, piss poor takes. And I was, like, sorry because I was getting petty because I hate when people use that word. And I was like shut the fuck up I have literally been employed in hockey like I know more than you I know I know more than you I was like these takes suck you're a fucking idiot like I was just going off because I hate that and he just blocked me so that was one two I got an Instagram you know this I'm sure probably I could assume this I don't check Instagram DM requests I don't read text obviously I'm not looking at fucking Instagram DM requests I do it once every couple months and I just like look and get overwhelmed but I actually opened one last night. I think it was from a few weeks ago, but I just saw it. It was some guys like, hey, want to go half and half on a baby? <laughs> it's kind of funny. I laughed. I didn't um, open it or anything. I did not respond. <laughs> I that is kind of funny, honestly. That's so <laughs> fucking funny. But I can relate to that tweet because like, as you guys know, like obviously Sarah and I at this point are quite literally running a business together. And I will text Sarah like a fucking chain of messages, like questions about, hey, do you have caption ideas? Hey, can you meet at this time with like a potential sponsor? Hey, uh, I need this for tomorrow. Or hey, can you do this for the show? And I'll send like 8,000 texts in a row. And then she'll like respond to like the one I didn't need an answer from. And I'm like, Sarah, like, I see you on Twitter. Like, what the fuck? Like, I'm the one person that you have to respond to because we run a literal business. (laughs) I'm like, this is so relatable. One of my New Year's resolutions is responding to text more. It was also my New Year's resolution for the last two years. But maybe, maybe this is the year. Third time's the (laughs) show. You can ignore all the dumb shit that I say to you. Like last night I was fucking hammered at our company Christmas party. And I texted Sarah and I was like, 100K, I'm getting a blessing tattoo. (laughs) I was like, I thought that that was response worthy. And then I was like, this is the one she's going to respond to. It's the dumbest one I've sent all day. Every other work thing, every other potential meeting, I'm like, I like message someone back to say, I'm like, yeah, I'm like still waiting for like a like yes or no back from Sarah. I don't know. Like she, I don't know. it's it's fantastic I I do I'm going to get better I am Mm -hmm. that's all that matters is that you like that's all that matters a for a for effort this is like a participation trophy situation (laughs) I'm gonna actively try to get better I recognize that I am bad at it and I'm like there's only so many like obviously I'll ignore like you know those random people that just text you 
hey, like, haven't talked to you. And I'm like, don't give a shit. I have your number mm-hmm. saved. I do not give a shit. <laughs> no, I actually blocked someone the other day because they kept periodically texting me. And they were like, do you even see my text? Like, yeah, I see your text. Just stop texting me if you're not getting a response. So I blocked them. <laughs> Good for you. Recognition is the first step to recovery. You know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll figure it out. We'll, 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 work, we'll work through it. Um, do you have any closing thoughts? All right. I don't think I do either, except for another quick thank you for everyone who bought some of our merch. Really appreciate it. We added some new styles. Oh no, my actual other tweet of the week. I lied. That fucking guy who tweeted us about our merch. Oh yeah. I forgot. Yeah. That was a tweet of the week. He was fucking nuts. He was so bad. Yeah. So if you missed this, this, we like dropped our merch line and some guy like came for our fucking throats and was like, who are you people? So insane that you think you're relevant enough to have merch. What the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. And like Sarah and I like got in like a Twitter beef with him along with some of you guys. And we decided <laughs> to like, it was a joke at first. Cause like I texted our like graphic designer, shout out Lindsay Stevens, um, a picture of it because she was like dying laughing. And I was like, we should actually put this on like a jacket and like make a tweet out of it. And she like actually made the sweatshirt. And I was like, LOL, JK, like whatever. And someone was like, no, you should actually publish this. So we did. And someone bought it. So we do have a hater tweet. We have a tweet of the week on a fucking hoodie. That's true. We do. That's the first. That's a big first. A tweet of the week on a hoodie. Yep. We should just, we should just start putting like once a month, like a tweet of the week on a hoodie. (laughs) Anytime we get a hater. Come for us and you will be made into a real life walking meme. And you'll get no profit from it. Just. (laughs) Yep. We will profit off of your anti-likeness. Thank you. Yep. (laughs) um but those are my closing thoughts thanks so much for listening we will see you guys next week and keep on sipping y'all